Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna show you guys finally how to add a flare panel to your pants. This has been requested so many times. I'm here to deliver it to you guys. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to apply it to any pants you want. Now, before anything, I gotta say that the main key essential thing you gotta know about flare panels is having seam allowance. Super, super important, okay? Seam allowance. If you don't have seam allowance, I mean, obviously it's possible to make a flare panel without seam allowance, but if you want the flare panel to look like it's actually part of the pants and not just like another fabric layered on top of another and then just like sewed in, you need seam allowance. Normally I measure mine to about half an inch um, and that's what I'm doing in this video. So yeah, half an inch, seam allowance, remember that. Okay, so what do we need? Obviously the pants you wanna work on. I have a pair of George jeans from Walmart that I'll be working on. Also you're gonna need the extra fabric you wanna make the flare panel out of. Now one thing about the flare panel, I'd recommend staying consistent when it comes to like the material that you choose to use for the flare panel. It should be consistent with the pants you're trying to add it onto. Since I'm using jeans, I probably wouldn't use something like silk you know what I mean? Some lightweight material. And then vice versa, if I was using silk pants, for example, I probably wouldn't wanna use this as the flare panel, like this material, because a flare panel would probably be too stiff compared to the silk pants. Obviously it depends on the project you're working on. I'm not saying don't do it, because obviously you can do it, but I recommend just for now, staying consistent with the material you're gonna use. We're also gonna need a ruler, a white chalk pencil, fabric cutting scissors, and a seam ripper. Oops seam ripper, some pins to hold it down, an iron to iron out the creases or even make new creases. And then lastly, a sewing machine. Now you don't need a sewing machine. You can also hand sew it together, but if you want a more like permanent and more secure solution, then I just recommend using a sewing machine. Also be good practice. So here's how the pants I'm going to use sits on my shoe. It's pretty average, nothing too special. Laid out flat, the opening measures to eight inches, but we want to increase it to 10 inches. I think 10 inches is a good baseline for anyone that hasn't worked with flares before. It's a safe measurement that isn't too wide, but not too small. So I think a good baseline measurement is 10 inches. Now, what does this mean? We have to create the flare panel to be three inches. Now why three and not two? Cause you know, 10 minus eight is two. And that's because we have to dedicate half an inch four seam allowance on both sides of the starting points of the flare panel. So it's half an inch on both sides, plus the length of the flare panel, which is two, to get three inches. The next step is to remove the stitches on the hem to open it. For this DIY, we're gonna leave the hem open instead of refolding it. Now most jeans have two different seams on both sides. Usually the inseam has a folded seam while the outseam has a basic and straightforward seam, which we're gonna use since it's easier to make the panel look flush with the pants. Since I plan on keeping the hem open, I ironed the hem creases straight. Now to figure out how long you want the flare panel to go up your pants. I normally measure 16 or 17 inches personally, like in this video I did 16 inches, and that's because I want the flare to start at about the bottom of my knee. But I have a 33 inseam, so if that's too long, then you can put the pants on and just mark where you want the flare panel to start. Once you marked where you want the starting point to be, we're gonna use a seam ripper to open up the seam up to the point where you marked. Afterwards, clean up the area by removing the excess thread so you'll have an easier time with the sewing process. It's always easier to work on a clean workspace. Now to create the flare panel. If you choose to use a fabric with distressings, keep in mind that if you cut certain threads, the distressings will come undone since there's nothing holding them down. So I'd recommend using a less distressed area to avoid any problems. I ended up deciding to extend the flare to three inches instead of two inches because I wanted the flare to be just a little bit wider. Once I figured out which part I wanted to use, I put two marks that were three inches from each other as this is going to be the width of the flare panel, making sure to leave at least half an inch on both sides for the seam allowance. Next up, we have to figure out where the midpoint is at the top of the flare. To do this, I measured the center between these two points and put a mark there, drew a straight line vertically from the zero inch and three inches mark. Then using one of these lines I just made, measured and marked the midpoint once again so that you can use your ruler to line up the two midpoint markings you made to make another mark to show where the flare panel will start or the tip of the triangle. Now to draw the flare guidelines, line up your ruler with the zero inch mark and the top midpoint mark and draw a line and then do this same to the other side. At this point, you can cut off the excess fabric, but make sure to leave at least half an inch for the seam allowance. Now to add on the flare panel to the seam of your pants. On your pants, we're going to use the same exact seam crease from the original seam. With the pants flipped inside out, take one side of the seam on the pants and fold it naturally on its crease. Making sure the flare panel is facing the right side, line up the folded crease with the mark guideline of the flare panel that you made. Make sure that the end of the flare is flush with the end of the pant leg. When you think you have the guideline and seam creases matched, pin them together. You'll only need about like four pins max, one on each end 
and then two throughout. Putting too many pins can make the fabrics uneven with each other. When everything is pinned, run your fingers from the bottom to the top of the seam to make sure there aren't any wrinkles and that the pants seam and the flare panel are flat with each other. Now we can start sewing. We're going to use the crease from the pants seam as the guideline to follow as you sew the flare panel. It might be helpful here to re-iron the seam to create a more pronounced crease if you can't really see it. Or you can also just take a sharpie and draw a line following the crease. If you do end up using the sharpie, the marking will be on the inside of the pants so you'll be okay. As you're sewing, make sure to always check that you're sewing what you want to sew because sometimes loose fabric gets caught underneath. Next thing you know, you have to undo everything because you sewed like multiple layers together when that wasn't your intention. Once that's finished, do the same thing to the other side. Line up the folded seam with the other side of the guideline triangle, pin them together, and then sew it. When you're happy with the flare, turn the pants inside out again and sew a zigzag stitch along the seam allowance areas to secure it. The last thing to do is cut off the excess fabric and you're done.